Okay, so this week's film is the 2010 film How I Ended the Summer. It's a Russian film made uh, in 2010. One of its biggest things was it won Best Film at the London Film Festival. Um, and it also won the Silver Bear Award for Best Actor in uh, in the Berlin Film Festival. And the interesting about that is that they got two awards for best actor because you know it's two lead performances that make this film it's anchored by two guys and uh sort of like sleuth this is like a real mental chess game between like two very strong actors i felt sleuth had way too much plot going on this one works really well on just like emotions and it's a really original unique uh, story because it's it's set in a remote weather station in sort of like northern arctic russia and two men who have to run this weather post basically one of them is this older guy called sergey who's been there for decades you know he's there and the younger guy called pavel who's there as like a like an intern he's he's writing a research paper called how i ended the summer where the title comes from which to be honest sounds like a 10 year old school project rather than you know this guy who looks maybe 18 or 20 so basically the story is you got this young guy you got this older guy and they're not particularly getting along well because one guy has been there for you know a long long time probably decades working here the other guy's young he's not taking it too seriously he's having fun he's listening to music he's messing around and he's sort of messing up the the scans that they're taking and all the the meter readings they're doing and um so it's sort of like there's a little tension between them an understandable you know unease between them but for the long time it stays kind of frozen and under the surface and then eventually there's a few incidents a few misread meter readings a few um things that cause the conflict to suddenly escalate um the big key plot point that occurs and this one's not ruining it it's the it's the the focal point of the plot is that the younger guy is informed by their control who's you know somewhere on mainland that the older guy's wife and child have been involved in a car accident and are in a life-threatening condition so this by this stage the younger guy knows how angry the older guy can get and particularly with him so their relationship is already at you know quite a low point after this young guy Pavel has already messed up some meter readings and Sergei clearly loves his wife and child we see him give like a leave a telegram for them earlier in the film so we know it's gonna obviously hit him very hard understandably so basically the younger guy is the only one in the room when he receives this news and he it's up to him to give the emergency message to the older guy and it's just this great scene where you see in his eyes you see the cogs turning in his head as He's reading out this telegram about the wife and child being in this car accident. So uh, the Pavel, the young guy, suddenly has this weight on his shoulders, you know. In a lot of scenes, as they're doing stuff, he's like holding back and he knows in his... You see in his face that he really is considering whether to tell him or not and feeling a bit sorry for him. But you can also read the fear in his face as well. And that's where the dilemma comes from. He's slightly afraid of this older man. And he's not sure if it's... We're not sure if it's justified or not at the moment it's just a basic workplace friction or it could develop into something else um the older guy sergey is quite hard to read you, you can't really tell what he's thinking he's got this sort of blank stare for the most part and the younger guy he sort of wears his expressions a little bit more on the sleeve a little bit more expressive but he's also quite dialed down you can really feel the tension between the two right from the off because there's a lot of long silences, a lot of gaps in the dialogue, you know, dramatic pauses, and it just creates this real palpable unease between the two. One great scene is where there's this moment where Pavel is waiting for an urgent response back from the meteorological department that they're talking to on the radio. Um, he's waiting for this response to know what to do, whether to tell Sergei and, you know, maybe not tell him this pretty devastating news. That could send him over the edge and he's waiting for the response back and he's told to wait on the frequency so you hear this kind of whirring noise this sort of <laughs> you 
you just hear this frequency just going higher and higher in pitch it's getting louder it's getting softer and it's sort of meandering along in the background and Pavel's just sitting there waiting for the callback and it goes on for like a minute or two and it just drives him to tears he has this like emotional breakdown because he's just being tormented with this droning signal that's being emitted by the radio as he waits on hold the static just you know r drives him crazy and by the fact that he can't communicate anyone he can't contact anyone whether it's the you know the department you know on the mainland he can't get through to them on the radio they're not you know responding back to his genuine concerns he can't get through to this older guy sergey and so he feels very alone and you can just tell he's got this sort of fractured state of mind where he's really at low ebb. So this, you know, very simple problem that could be handled rationally, he can't find that clarity. And so he's not handling the issue at the right sort of distance and logic that's needed. And he's sort of, it's, it's interesting how his paranoia is also just as, you know, destructive as the old man's, you know, standoffish nature. And so you've got one person who's very paranoid and one person who's very cut off and distant. And the two of them put together could lead to, you know, serious fireworks. The crux of the film is this young guy, Pavel, just trying to trying his best to gauge how the older guy will react, how Sergei is going to react to this earth shattering news, you know, of his wife and child being in a life threatening condition, you know, miles and miles away. Uh, they have to get a ship just to get back to the mainland, you know. Even though Sergei's not the erratic type, I think, you know, he does have anger issues. But in many ways, the sort of the dilemma of Pavel really shows, you know, how much how paranoid Pavel is, and how paranoid someone can get out here in the wilderness with just one other person that you just can't, you know, figure out what they're thinking. And that's something you hear about on expeditions and. You know when they're climbing up mountains and stuff like Everest you always hear the climbers saying how they get to a stage where they really don't trust the other person and um, one of the cool things I just wanted to bring up cinematographically is there's like these minute long of time-lapse shots they last like almost a minute and then it's all these breaks from character breaks from the story and you see like the the Arctic landscape sort of shifting and changing you see like the wind sweeping across the grounds you see the seas start to change you know current you even see like the colors and the tones of the of the air and the wind and the and the fog and stuff change you get uh, sort of this awesome shot right at the end where you see the the polar landscape change colors you see it go from pink to blue to you know to dark red it's incredible and it's like obviously it's a time-lapse shot so it's been sped up but it looks really cool and it really is a great visual metaphor for the like the changing moods that go on between the main characters the the shifting tensions as they go from being you know sort of co-workers to suddenly you know hostiles you know in a very short you know sped up sequence of events there's a great shot you know another great example of these time-lapse shots this is probably the, one of the best shots in the film is you see one character walking off into the distance and this is a big wide landscape shot of like mountains but you don't see the mountains you can only make out their outline because there's this thick fog you know it's in the middle of a storm and the great thing is you see the character walking off into this fog and the wind is blowing and just the camera holds for like a few minutes and slowly the wind blows the fog away and you just see the mountains get revealed in the background of the shot it's just a great moment and it's probably you know you know fake fog that's been created with a huge wind machine off camera blowing it away but it it takes its time so it looks like it's you know mother nature slowly revealing the landscape behind it and they have this thing prophetic fallacy where you know the weather and the temperature and all that stuff reflects the characters and you know what's going on in their mind and you know they do a great job of using the arctic landscape we're using that as a metaphor for the you know the cold distant relations of these two characters and you know how quickly their mindsets are changing can't overstate and why i think it's so great is that it's about how this young guy has to is so unsure of how the older guy will react to the news about his wife and child so he knows if he withholds this bombshell of a revelation he won't have to you know deal with the fallout the 
the crux of the film is really when he does reveal it. It's like a it's like a powder keg waiting to explode. Um, it's just funny because he re he just blurts it out in the middle of like a heated conversation. He just callously blurts out, you know, your wife and child are, have been uh, are dead or you know dying or something like that. Um, it's in Russian, so the, I'm paraphrasing it. There's subtitles, of course. And I'm just thinking, yeah, great job. That was the best way to, you know, convey that information. Just say it in the middle of a conversation. And it's just this great tense scene that, that really is the pivotal moment where you're like, okay, how's he going to react? And we've had all this build up, wondering what his reaction's going to be. And it's this great scene, this like dramatic confrontation out in the middle of this barren landscape. It doesn't go well pretty much manifests itself into this cat and mouse chase so like a great metaphor for like the nuclear stalemate between US and Russia and I'm sure there's all kinds of you know uh, allegories to this but you know that's for someone who's got time to write out a whole university essay about it <laughs> you know it literally it's one of those blank sort of films where there's so little detail that you can really make the characters and their conflict about anything it can be really uh, a metaphor for any situation really but uh, I don't necessarily think that makes better films by just over analyzing it to that degree and make it seem like the director intended that I think the director in this case just wanted a simple film that you know analyzes the human relations and how quickly they can go bad so I just want to like recap. I think one of the best things about this film is the face acting. You know, you got the craggy features of Sergei. You've got Pavel, who's got these, you know, these glances he makes every now and then. And they're both quite quiet. They're both quite stoical. Um, but particularly the older man has this sort of icy uh, composure. He really doesn't let on what he's thinking, and he just takes these ridiculously long pauses, which just you know make your skin crawl because you just don't know. You know, is this really a loving father or is this actually a much more broken down person who's been living out in the wilderness for so long? No human contact. He's now working with this younger guy who's, uh, you know, pissing him off, frankly, at every turn because they're such contrasting personalities. And you're just wondering, when's it going to blow? You just look at their faces to find out what they're thinking. And it's just great, great character acting here so deserved the two awards they deserve many awards for the acting because it's it's great direction it's incredibly lean like the script and the directing make it feel so lean it's a two hour film but and it's full of like slow burn suspense and that you know that over a lengthy running time like two hours can be so boring or you know can really lull you to sleep but this film for all its fixed shots all its time lapses all its long stares you know, it does a really good job of keeping it ticking over. Yeah, so I just want to say, like, the director, Alexei Popogrebsky, uh, sorry, I forgot that wrong. Um, yeah, he did a great job on this. He was the screenwriter and also the director, and he just did a fantastic job. It's, it's such an original plot line. and just keeps it to the acting, keeps it to the emotions, keeps it to the fear and the paranoia. You might just write deep characters without exposition i think that's the best thing about this film there's zero exposition you've you're very much in the moment following these guys so you can put a lot on them you know it's a familiar young old conflict i gotta say it's really engaging for a minimalist film you've never seen a min minimalist film feel so big and dramatic 